be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Almost three weeks ago, we celebrated the feast of the presentation of Jesus in the temple. Liturgically, that's not the official end of Christmas or the Christmas season, but it does mark a critical moment in the life of Jesus. On that day, Joseph and Mary came to the temple to offer Jesus to the priests. The priests in turn accepted the child on behalf of God. That was the Jewish custom, of course, but it also recognized basic human reality. Someday, all parents must give their children away. They must let go and watch as the kids pursue the kind of lives to which they feel called. There's a painting of this moment by the 15th century artist Giovanni Bellini that's long fascinated me. In it, he captures the poignancy of this ritual as Mary hands Jesus over to the priest. On her face, there's a bit of foreboding while the priest looks pretty solemn as he reaches for the child. Meanwhile, as we would expect of a child or a baby, Jesus seems totally detached from the scene. But woven through this are hints of tension because we don't know exactly where we are in the ritual. Is Mary handing over the child? Or is the priest handing the child back to her? Whichever it is, there seem to be signs of resignation in Mary's face. As her firm grip on her son suggests, she doesn't want to give him up. Perhaps she has a premonition of what's to come when, after the crucifixion, she once again holds her son in her arms. What she sees for her son is what no parent would want for their child. Regardless of that drama just below the surface, offer Jesus up is what Mary and Joseph have to do. It's part of the covenant they have made with God. In return for the gift of their child, they offer Jesus back to God. God, in the person of the priest, accepts and consecrates the child and then returns Jesus to the arms of his mother. But the expression on Mary's face says that Jesus is no longer entirely hers. There's an obvious parallel between the presentation of Jesus in the temple and our own baptism. Like Jesus, we didn't have much say when our parents presented us to the, at the font for baptism. In an act of consecration, our parents, for a moment, literally handed us over to God 
in hopes that God would walk with us and bless us. They prayed that we would amount to something, live happy and full lives, and be a force for good in the world. Deep within their hearts, they hoped that tragedy and discord and, and unhappiness would stay far away from us. But they also knew that sooner or later, they would have to let go and watch as we sorted out our lives for ourselves. On Ash Wednesday, we marked the beginning of Lent with ashes on our head. Certainly, that's a ritual with religious significance. But within it is a heavy dose of reality therapy. It really is true that whether we like it or not, from dust we have come and to dust we shall return. That return to the earth is inevitable. And whether we find that thought shocking or merely sobering, it's a wake-up call. If for some it's an invitation to despair, we as Christians believe that it's an invitation to do something wonderful with our lives. Today's first reading from the book of Genesis makes reference to a covenant between Noah and God. God on one side never vows never again to wipe out human life or life itself from the face of the earth. Rather, through the terms of the covenant, each person will have the chance to be saved. All will have the opportunity to walk with God and to make the most of the life that God has given us. The choice is ours to make. We can be wildly creative with the gifts God has given us, or we can turn the other way and, in, and retreat into escapism, an escapism of opportunities squandered. If Lent is a wake-up call to our mortality, it also reminds us that it might finally be time for us to make and seal our own covenant with God. Through our earliest years, our parents and others crafted the terms of that covenant for us. But Ash Wednesday invites us to step forward and negotiate the terms for ourselves. That's why it issues the clarion call, repeat and believe in the gospel. Only we can provide the answer for ourselves. Of course, all of this really depends on whether we even want to bargain with God. If so, would we take it seriously? And for what would we ask from God? I've met people who would gladly sell their soul if just once the Vikings would win the Super Bowl. Others will gladly trade their lives if... Uh, Others will gladly trade their lives in the sole per pursuit of power and wealth and bales and bales of stuff. But would we be willing to dedicate ourselves to walking on God's paths in return for a life well lived? I think not a few of us, and myself included, are a little afraid to negotiate with God. My fear has always been that God would ask way too much of me. What if God asked of me something outlandish, or too hard, or impossible, or something I'd never want to do in a million years? Then one day the awesome truth dawned on me. All God asks of me is my entire life. As on the Feast of the Presentation and at Baptism, all God wants is that I hand over my life for consecration to something sacred. All I need do in my covenant with God 
is to hand over everything that's important to me, including my life itself. If all that sounds too demanding or even frightening, it's important to remember one other thing. God is a terrible negotiator. God makes ridiculous bargains and then gives away the store in the covenant with us. Simply put, I might give my life to God, but God turns right around and gives it all right back to me. Life, then, is yours and mine to do with as we see fit, in accord with the terms of the covenant we have with God. During Lent, God makes us an offer we ought not refuse. God asks us to recognize how precious a gift our lives really are. God then asks us to use our lives prudently, to make the most of every talent, and to squeeze the best out of every opportunity that comes our way. So I would encourage you to renegotiate your covenant with God this Lent. Do it in the knowledge that God will give back to you everything you thought you had negotiated away. And if you've not done so before, make your own covenant with God. Be grateful for what your parents and others have done on your behalf, but recognize that now it is your time to act. And do so assured that when you consecrate your life to God, God gives it all back to you with value added.